welcome back to the channel. I'm out here in the garage today trying not to freeze. I got my little heater going down here. And I uh, just wanted to get another video out to you guys. Um, I was kind of sitting around thinking about, you know, I get a lot of questions about what the setup in the car is and just a lot of specific questions on uh, on the car and kind of some, uh, you know, what did I do to, to get it to go as fast as it did and, you know, questions like that. So I figured I would do a video on uh, on the specifics of the car and kind of what it took to run 850s and uh, kind of give you guys an insight on some of my uh, secrets on the way I tuned the car to get it to perform the way it did. So I'll kind of keep this kind of linear and I'll start at the back of the car and talk about what all is done in the back. So in the back of the car, uh, starting the fuel tank, it's got a 0304 Cobra uh, on 3 uh, fuel tank. It has a billet fuel hat with twin 465 liter per hour fuel pumps. Um, moving on from there, so with the fuel pumps, it, you know, it has a dash 8 feed line and a dash 10 return and 160 pound per hour Holly fuel injectors. Um, moving on to the suspension, the car has a narrowed 8.8 .8 rear end with strange 35 spline axles, a strange 35 spline spool, and four 9 inch ends, the big four 9 inch ends. Uh, 5 8 wheel studs and a 15 by 10 with a three and a half inch backspace uh, built specialties street light wheel that's powder coated black. Uh, the tires are Mickey Thompson Pro Radials, they're 275.60s. Um, for suspension, the car has a Viking double adjustable Crusader uh, rear shocks. They have the stiff valving for drag radials and small tire high horsepower setups. Um, Team Z lower control arms with solid uh, spherical ends on. Ba uh, the baseline outlaw, outlaw relocated upper control arms. Uh, the instant center on this car is about 36 inches out about nine and a half inches high and like the anti-squat percentage is around like 145 which seems to work really well for this car on a drag radial. Um, the drive shaft is a three and a half inch chrome molly drive shaft built by PST out of Florida. Look them up they make a great product. Um, the drive shaft also has uh, Spicer 1350 U-joints in it are really strong. Um, moving on from there up to the transmission, uh, it is a TH400 built by my, by my good friend Cameron Powers, uh, CPR transmissions. Uh, also, you guys have seen I've got his uh, sticker on the back window. He uh, kind of sponsored me and helped, and helped me out a lot with, uh, with transmission work. So, if you guys are looking for a transmission, then uh, get with me and I can uh, point you in the right direction and get you talking to Cameron. So a little bit inside the transmission uh, that I know, the transmission has a uh, Jake's Performance Billet Trans Brake. It has the uh, first or second gear uh, leave option so I can launch the car in first or second gear. Um, and then the transmission has a lot of pro proprietary stuff that uh, Cameron does inside of them to make them live. Uh, moving on, the transmission also has a JW Performance, I believe is the brand, uh, bell housing. Uh, it basically adapts the TH400 to the mod motor. Uh, it's also SFI certified. And inside of the bell housing is a PTC 9.5 inch converter. Um, the stator in that converter is an 18.2 uh, spec for this setup. Uh, it works great. I've seen about 2% slip on the big end in the quarter mile. That's how I'm able to get that 159 miles an hour out of this slow piece of junk. Um, moving on from there, you guys know a lot about the engine, but I'll kind of reiterate some stuff with the engine. It's a Texan block, a Cobra crank, it has Molnar Power Rider H-beam rods in it, Wysco pistons, stock Ford head gaskets, the Felpro head gaskets. It has a DSS port match PI heads on it. It has a set of custom ground cam shafts done by Bullet that were specced by Todd Warren. If you guys are in the market for a set of custom cam shafts for your mod motor, 
you guys need to look up Todd. Ted, I, I attribute most of the success behind this car to the cams that Todd has done for it. I believe that's why the car has done so well. Um, Todd can set you up, you, you send him your specs, you tell him what you want to do, and uh, and he'll get you a set of cams uh, spec. So, highly recommend Todd for a uh, set of cams. Uh, it has an Edelbrock Victor Jr. intake on it with an Edelbrock uh, elbow and Acufab 90mm throttle body. Um, I think that's about it for the engine. The car has a ON3 uh, Gen 2 turbo kit with a Borg Warner SXE 76 millimeter. It's a 76 millimeter uh, compressor billet wheel with a the 8782 turbine wheel. Uh, it has a 125 AR. It has a four inch downpipe off the turbo and which exits on the driver's side bumper. It has three inch intercooler piping with an on three performance four inch thick intercooler. Normally on a on a hot day at the end of the quarter mile, I see IATs around 145 and 150 with that intercooler, which isn't too bad considering the price point on that intercooler and, and the whole on three turbo kit. Underneath the engine is sitting a UPR Chromoly K member, uh, UPR Chromoly A arms, strange single adjustable front shocks, UPR. 14 by 125 or 150 uh, springs that are sitting on the coilovers. Um, stock front brakes. Um, the front wheels are the SVE drag wheels. They're they're like a race star look-alike. Um, engine management. The car has a Holly EFI uh, with the Holly uh, pre-made engine harness. Uh, really great product. If you guys are in the market for a standalone ECU, I would say Holly is the way to go. Um, getting into the Holly a little bit, the Holly, uh, the software is easy to use. Um, the closed loop fuel control, for you guys that don't know what that is, closed loop fuel, fuel control is basically uh, the ECU can look and see what the air fuel ratio is while you're at wide open throttle or any, any part of the throttle. But the big thing is at wide open throttle. Um, you have a commanded air fuel table and the holly will trim your fuel in or out to meet that uh, target air fuel ratio. So it's pretty awesome and it's actually saved this car. I talked about it in a previous video. Um, so that's uh, it for engine management. It's holly EFI. It's the HP computer. I have a holly uh, 7 inch digital dash in the car. Um, for boost control I use a Boost leash, it's a boost leash, uh, pulse leash combo, so it's my boost controller and it's my bump box. Uh, really easy to work with. Um, I use CO2 on, with the boost leash, and I really don't do a lot of boost control. Uh, I bring the boost in from, I launch the car on 13 pounds of boost at 4,000 RPM, and I bring all the boost in by about 0.7 seconds. So I go from 13 pounds to about 29 to 30 pounds by 0.6 seconds in the run. Um, and the way that I make the car hook, leaving on that much boost and that much RPM, is I use a timed uh, timing retard. So this is kind of getting into some secrets. I don't really call it a secret, it's just, I mean, if you look around and you read and you do some research, you see that this is what guys are, are using, this is, this is the way to go. It's not so much about the boost control as it is about timing control, uh, getting getting a car like this to work. Um, especially a car like mine that had a problem spooling the big turbo, you kind of have to leave on a lot of boost um, to, keep, to get the turbo lit and to bring that boost in fast. So, leave on 13 pounds at 4,000 RPM. Um, immediately, as soon as I let off the trans brake button, I'm pulling about uh, anywhere from eight to 10 degrees for the first half second of the run and then I'm fading the timing back into uh, the normal timing table by about 1.2 seconds. So I'm leaving with a lot of power but I'm pulling a lot of power out of the engine by using the timing retard and that's what keeps the car hooked up. Timing retard or timing control is instantaneous whereas boost control is not quite as fast. 
you don't get as uh, repeatable results every time with the boost control versus using timing to control your power and traction. So uh, that's what I do there. Um, it's worked pretty good. My best 60 foot was a 123 60 foot and that was pulling that much timing. I probably could have went a little faster, but uh, I, was in, I was in the race at Montanas and I didn't want to take a chance on spinning. So pretty happy with those results. Um, so got that. Um, the car has a Team Z um, 10 point cage in it. Uh, Team Z has to call it an 8 point. But it's an 850 cert uh, chrome molly roll cage that my uh, good friend uh, Rusty Olson welded in the car. Rusty owns Boards and has Fabrication. Uh, I've shown, shown those guys on the channel before. Um, I'll put a link in the description to uh, everyone that's helped me out with this car and, uh, along the way. And so you guys can go check them out. Um, but like I said, Rusty owns Boards and has Fabrication. Uh, TIG welded the uh, whole cage in the car and did an amazing job. The welds are, are great uh, whenever Lonnie Brown uh, was certain the cage, you know, he made the comment that the welds look really good. Um, so I think that goes to to show how good of a job that Rusty did and uh, the quality of work he does. Um, I have a two and a half pound CO2 bottle on the car that I use for CO2 boost control, which I told you guys about. Um, the car at Race Trim has one Kirky uh, seat in the driver's side. Uh, for a shifter, I use a Precision Performance uh, shifter. So since the TH400 has a reverse manual valve body, the Precision shifter is actually reversed, so I can still push forward to go from first, second, third gear. Um, whereas part would be all the way in the back on that shifter. Um, really nice shifter. If you guys are in the market for one, I highly suggest you go check check out Precision Performance. Um, moving on from there, race weight. With me in the car is right at 3,200 pounds. Um, also, I forgot to mention that's almost with almost a full tank of gas, which I didn't mention that I do. I run uh, out of the pump E85 in this car. Um, the car has made 840 horsepower to the tire uh, on the dyno. It was on it was on 27 pounds for that uh, dyno pull. And normally the 853 and the 855 passes were, and they were at they were at 159 miles an hour. Uh, those were done on 29 to 30 pounds of boost. So I'm guessing anywhere from 870 to 900 wheel horsepower is about what this car made to go the times it did. Uh, as far as shock settings go, typically on a good tight track on a drag radial, um, I run a fairly stiff setting on the front shocks I normally uh, they have a setting of 1 to 10 1 being the softest and 10 being the stiffest setting I normally run about 7 or 8 on a tight track I limit the travel to about three and a half inches of front end travel um, for the rear I normally run a fairly stiff compression setting on the rear shock and a somewhat loose rebound setting on the rear shock. Not too lo loose, but not too tight uh, on the rebound setting. Usually for air pressure in the rear tires, I normally set on the, on the 275 drag radials, I normally set the rear air, air pressure at around 15 and a half to 16 PSI cold. So after the burnout, you're looking at like 17 pounds of air pressure in the rear tires, and that's on a good track. Well, that's all I got for now. I hope you guys enjoyed my uh, ramble uh, of things that are done to the car and what it took me to run 850s and be successful with this car. Um, thank you to everyone that subscribed and all my new subscribers and all the people that have been subscribed to my channel. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. If you guys want to get alerts to new videos, make sure you hit the bell. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. And uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will do my best to answer them and get back to you. Y'all have a great day.